Hey gang, we're gonna try something a little different today. I call it Images Reimagined. The idea from this came to me by spending lots of time on Facebook, watching photographers that post picture after picture after picture with the caption that says, CC welcome. Come on, really? These same photographers, when they do get constructive criticism, are the ones that fight back and argue about who's right or who's wrong. Really all you wanted, admit it, is for people to like your picture and say, oh, it's great. Well, that's fine. If that's the case, just post the picture. But if you're gonna post a picture and ask for criticism, understand that actually, if you want it to be constructive, you've got to provide some information, some technical information for starters, ISO, shutter speeds, apertures, what kind of lens did you shoot with? But better yet, provide some background about why you took the shot. What were you trying to accomplish? Did you meet your mark? Are you really happy with it? Or is there something that you're wishing you would have done differently? Then someone with similar or more experience than you can look at your image and make suggestions based on that information as it applies to the image. That's how truly constructive criticism works. If you simply ask for a person to give you constructive criticism with no background information, all you're getting is one person's opinion, period. The other event that contributed to this idea was a recent judging that I did for a local camera club. As part of the judging, I was asked to do a review of the top winning photographs, a little critique. While I was doing the judging, I was really struggling because there were some amazing images. The problem was they were really lacking in terms of post-production or even lack of post-production in some cases, but they were potentially great photographs. So I asked the organizer if it was possible to get the photographers who took these pictures to provide me with the original raw files so that I could do my version of these images as part of the critique. Fortunately, everybody agreed. So when it came time for the judging, we announced the winners, I did my critique of their images, but then I also showed them what my experience was with their image. And I'll tell you, it was a big hit. Because remember, when you take a picture and you post it on Facebook, or even if you make a huge print of it and you post it in a gallery, every single person that views that picture will have a very different experience with that photograph than you had. They're not going to know the extent and the work that you had to go to to make that image look the way it does. And frankly, they don't care. They're going to have their experience with it. So the photograph's gotta stand on its own. But I find that one of the best ways to help people learn what the potential of their photographs is is to show them the experience that I'm having. Not tell them you should move this out and you should change this color, you should crop it here, but to show them the experience that I'm having and then explain to them the details behind it. So that's what I'm gonna do. I put out a request on Facebook asking for some daring photographers who were willing to send me one of their photographs along with the original raw file so that I could do a critique on YouTube for 30 plus thousand people to see and also, if I felt that I could improve on the image, do my version of the post-production and show them why and how I did what I did. And that is Images Reimagined. My goal is to do one of these every week, that is providing that enough of you watching will think that this would be helpful to you and send me one of your images. I've included a link in the info section below where you'll find all the details. So let's go ahead and get started on the first image. Hey gang, thanks for checking out this episode of Images Reimagined. This is where I review images that were submitted by photographers like you and give constructive feedback through my eyes and my experience. Be sure to stay tuned until the very end for a look at how I imagine this image. This week's photo comes to us all the way from Poland and photographer Bartos Ortowski. Be sure to check out his Flickr profile. I have the link posted in the info section below. This image definitely has some potential. It looks like a fashion image that you might see in Vogue or some other high fashion magazine. And it appears to be a shot that is meant to showcase the coat or the sunglasses. Now, because we can't see the model's eyes, this would not be a great shot for a modeling portfolio. It is clearly a location shot. I don't think it's a composite image. I can see that it was shot with off camera direct flash on camera right. The camera details that I do know it was shot with a Nikon D610, which is a full frame sensor. 
a 50 millimeter f 1.8 lens was set at f16 with a shutter speed of 1 200th of a second and the ISO was 100. The flash, a Nikon SP700 with a Yangnuo wireless trigger. Overall, I think this is a very cool shot. I love the use of diagonal lines leading towards the subject. Anytime you can use a diagonal to lead the viewer to your subject, you're going to create a stronger image. And there's a lot of color in this scene, but I would love to see more of it in the finished shot. The shot has nice blues and greens and yellows and oranges and even some reds, but overall, it appears very flat. Now, if the shot was meant to sell the coat or the sunglasses, I would also love to see a little bit more detail in them, and I suspect that the designer would too. I think that the shot could be every bit as dramatic if we had just a little more shadow detail in the jacket and the sunglasses. Now, I love to tilt my camera, but I kind of live by the philosophy that if I'm going to tilt, I'm going to tilt. I want it to look intentional, not like it was a mistake or just sloppy. I find that the slight tilt of this image is somewhat distracting. I think it would have looked cool if the camera was tilted much more aggressively, or equally as cool if it was just leveled off so that the horizontal and vertical lines were properly situated. I do notice that there are a few dust specks in the sky and on the building. They should have been retouched from the image. This is generally easy to do with a spot healing tool or the clone stamp. Leaving dust specks in your shot just reduces the overall quality of the photograph. So that being said, if we take a look at the original raw file that Bartos submitted, we can see that while the shot is slightly overexposed, we have a lot to work with here and most of the comments that I made can be easily addressed. So the first thing I want to do is open the file in Camera Raw and work on the brightness, the contrast, the colors, and I'm also going to add just a little bit of sharpening to the image. My plan of attack is to transform the image so that the vertical and horizontal lines are level. And I'm going to crop the image just a little bit tighter so that the model is truly the main focus of the shot. In a perfect world, the clouds in the sky would have been higher and not so close to the horizon. But obviously we can't blame the photographer for what mother nature gives us to work with. As for me, I'm not opposed to swapping out the sky with a better one as long as it can be made to look real and natural. And yes, I'm that guy who constantly takes images of cool sky and clouds with my iPhone and then maintains a library of those for moments like this. Now an important element is to make sure that the deep blue sky is lighter towards the horizon and darker towards the top of the image. That's how Mother Nature intended it to be. Next up, I want to remove the red and white signs in the lower part of the frame. They definitely stand out as something that doesn't belong there. And if I switch back to the finished image that Barto submitted, you can see that he did the same. And while I'm at it, I'm going to remove the windows in the center part of the building so that they don't create a distraction near the coat. Obviously, I'm going to clean up the model's skin using the spot healing tool, and I'll remove the stray hair that's across her forehead. For me, there either needs to be enough messy hair to make it look intentional or no messy hair at all. Before I forget, let's get rid of the remaining dust specks. Last but not least, I'm going to bring the drama by creating a 50% neutral gray layer and darken areas of the image that are secondary to the subject using a combination of a black brush and a gradient tool. This is going to help me make sure that the viewer of the image pays attention to the model and not her surroundings. And there you have it, my version of this image reimagined. Remember, I'm not saying that my image is better or correct. It is my vision of this image. You may have a different opinion, and if you do, please share it in the comment section below. Remember, stay constructive. You can say that you don't like something, but offer a solution or an alternative. I hope you find this helpful. If you would like to have your image reimagined, please follow this link. I've also posted it in the info section below. Your image could be my next video. So until next time, keep learning, keep thinking, and keep shooting. Adios. Thanks for watching. If you find these videos helpful, please give them a thumbs up and subscribe so that you don't miss a single episode. And if you've got a question that you'd like answered, post it in the comment section below. Your question could be my next video.